So today I've got an in-depth review of the brand new Wahoo Kicker Steer. This is an accessory right here. In fact, all assembled. It, it only takes like seven seconds to assemble. Uh, that allows steering in cycling applications, indoor cycling applications, in particular RGT. Uh, now this is not a very long review because this is not a very complex product. In fact, there actually is no electronics in the product once I take my phone away. So taking a look at what's inside the box before it's assembled, it's pretty straightforward. You got this phone tray piece right here. You got two paddles on the side uh, and then you've got a bike mount an out front bike mount that you put on on your bike and the cool part about the bike mount is it's fully compatible with the Wahoo Element computers as well as the Garmin Edge computers. They include that little extra plastic disc you see right there that allows you to swap between the two different kind of quarter churn mounting systems. Now to assemble all you're gonna do is take the two paddles on the outside stick them through there and then go ahead and just tighten that little bolt down on each side. It's really quick and easy. Now once that's done, go ahead and put the mount on your bike. Now this is probably the biggest hardware downside is the fact that it only fits round handlebars. And I feel like if I look at the giant Venn diagram of people who have round handlebars, people who have aero bars of some sort that are non-round, this is not compatible with, it's these people that are probably the ones that are gonna go ahead and wanna spend the money for this. So that's really unfortunate. Uh, in any case, once that's done, you just simply slide this whole thing like that, snap it onto the front of your bike. It's got a little locking mechanism on the bottom down there uh, and you're good to roll. Also note there's even a spot for the two hex wrenches to hang out down there. Uh, that way you don't lose them. I mean, you're still probably gonna lose them, but they're there at least. Uh, now with all that done, you can go ahead and take your phone and plop it in there with the RGT app. This is the companion app, if you will. Uh, and of course, then you have to have RGT on your computer, your tablet, whatever the heck it is you're running, Apple TV, et cetera, uh, to go ahead and actually see the race. Very, very similar in concept to Zwift, where you've got the companion app in the main screen. Once that's done, you can tap on the steering tab, uh, and this will show you this little screen right here. Mine has some debug information over it, so I can see what's going on in real time. Those numbers won't really show up on yours, uh, but allows you to go ahead and then steer. This is really straightforward here, folks. So basically, as you're steering, you're gonna go ahead and push on one side or the other side, and it's gonna steer your character, your avatar, up on the screen there. Uh, there is a sensitivity setting there that controls how responsive this whole setup is here uh, to your movements. And at the bottom, you'll see a calibrate option as well at the top as a on-off switch. That on-off toggle is really useful because if you need to grab your phone for something, then otherwise you're not like drunk cyclist across the road. Because remember, there's these using uh, the internal sensors in your phone to control steering. So you can actually sit there and and steer like this if you want to. And Wahoo says you can do that. You can also go ahead and just tap those two arrows on the left and right hand side, uh, and that'll do the same thing or use keyboard keys to steer. And in fact, if you have a kicker bike, you can use the little kicker bike buttons on the inside of the handlebars to go ahead and steer as well, just like you could in Zwift. So then you might be asking, what happens to your avatar when you stop steering? Does he like crash off the course or something like that? And the answer is no. The avatar basically follows whatever line that you were on. So you imagine when you steer, uh, you're steering to the left side or the right side of the allowable track. Uh, and once you stop steering, it just hangs out in that portion of the track. So think of like a running track and you steer to the left-hand side of the running track, you're in lane number one, and then you just stop steering, you're gonna stay in lane number one forever and ever and ever. Inversely, if you steer to the right side and go out to lane eight or so, then you're gonna hang out on that lane forever and ever and ever. And in some cases, if you're turning right, that's gonna work out well in the course. In other cases, if you're turning left, it won't work out so well. Uh, again, it just kind of stays your lane. So you don't really have to worry about that too much. And of course that means if the course is turning to the right, that'll be beneficial to you. If the course is turning to the left, it will not be, uh, and vice versa. But the point is you're not gonna crash. And also you can't crash into other people either, just like those of steering, you just kind of like move around them. Uh, the idea though being that you could go ahead and steer behind someone, get in their draft, you can cut the corners, and you can see that. I Cutting these corners here on a course where people did not have access to steering, and I did, was trivially easy. I just cut every single corner. But again, there was that lag there, which made it almost kind of tricky, and not in a good way, just kind of more in a, in a frustrating sort of way. Having given it a few rides now, I'd say it's actually better than I expected from a cycling steering standpoint, if that makes sense. Of course, I think like in 2023, uh, we don't actually have to like lean to steer our bikes indoors. We all understand that, you know, from a gamification standpoint, steering could be a controller, it could be buttons in your handlebar, it could be rotating your handlebars left and right with something like the Elite Steers of Smart. Those are all things that allow steering in game today. Uh, but this is pretty easy to use because it's just using my fingers to kind of depress one side of the other. And it, again, feels to me very, very good. The one caveat though is it's a little bit late and a little bit slow to respond. Like, 
one to three seconds in most cases, which just feels weird. Uh, and even I've tried the different sensitivity options all the way to the right, all the way to the left, and I found like almost all the way to the right is the best option. Uh, but even then, it's still not as responsive as I want. Like when I press on this, I want it to be like, boom, sharp corner and just it doesn't really happen like that. The good news though is that is easily solved with software. That's not really a, a hardware thing because again, there is no electronics in this. Uh, you're paying a hundred bucks for this, which by the way is the price. It's a hundred bucks, hundred euros. I think it's even a hundred pounds. Uh, but the funny thing though was that last week, last Friday when they didn't announce this but sent out an email to all of their uh, Wahoo X subscribers, you could buy this for 50% off. So 50 bucks. And to me, that's a much more reasonable price for this. Uh, because again, it's only compatible with RGT. It's not compatible with any other app out there. And then inversely, the existing steering solutions like the Elite Steers are Smart, uh, the Jetpack steering plate, those are not compatible with RGT. And it just seems like, come on folks, just, just make this stuff compatible across the board. And the funny thing here is that Wahoo could actually take their existing app and just rebroadcast it as a Bluetooth smart steering device, just like the Elite Steers are Smart, and that would indeed work in Zwift. Uh, but of course, given that Wahoo is busy suing Zwift right now, that seems unlikely that either A, Wahoo's gonna spend the time to do that, or B, that Zwift would even bother to go ahead and implement that. And then equally, Zwift could also go ahead in their companion app and do the exact same thing using this hardware. But again, why would Zwift try to benefit Wahoo when Wahoo is busy suing them? So welcome to the broken landscape of the indoor smart trainer realm of 2023. Now, all that aside, one notable thing is I asked Wahoo whether or not steering was going to be on by default for all events and stay on. Uh, and they said, yes, it's going to be on by default for all events and always on, which I think is really, really important to the success of steering in RGT. If we look at Zwift, for example, Zwift enabled steering in literally less than 24 hours after they announced it. They said, no, 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 it's not default for all events. In fact, it's off by default for all events. And basically, we're not going to we're not going to leverage it all on the platform for the next ever. And of course, however many years now it is later, virtually no one uses steering in Zwift. And that's because Zwift has not cared about it. Uh, in order for steering to succeed in any platform, that company has to care about it. And so I'm hoping that with Wahoo selling an accessory here, they'll leave it on and effectively force it on by default if they want people to leverage steering. I know that then upsets those that don't want to pay extra for this, though you could use kind of non really functional solutions that are free, but you could do that. Still, Wahoo has a choice to make. Do they want steering to be successful in a core part of RGT from a racing and training standpoint or not? And if they do, that's the only way to do that and to make this, of course, more affordable as well. And with that, that covers basically everything for the steer. I mean, I think it's obvious. I and virtually everyone else would love to see this for Zwift. Uh, I think that would make this hardware product a huge success, but I guess that's probably not gonna happen. Still, within the Wahoo RGT ecosystem, uh, it is a cool accessory. It is bulky. Uh, there's no getting around that. It looks a little bit bizarre and it's gigantic and all those things. But if I ignore those and just put it on my handlebars indoors on my bike, it actually works pretty well. With that, hopefully you found this interesting or useful. Go ahead and give it a like or a whack or a subscribe or something like that. It really does help with this channel and everything else here. Have a good one.